Welcome back to the DL1608 podcast, where we show you everything you ever wanted to know about the Mackie DL1608 digital live sound mixer. I'm your host, Mackie product manager, Ben Olswang. If you haven't already, go back and watch the previous episode of the DL1608 podcast for a complete overview of the DL1608 hardware and the master fader control application running on the iPad. In today's episode, I'm going to dive deep into the input processing. Each of the 16 input channels features a high pass filter, four band EQ, compressor, and gate. Let's look at these processing blocks and how to control them in more detail. As I showed you last episode, to enter the channel view, just press the small EQ curve at the top of any channel. The large EQ curve, shown at the top, can be manipulated directly for each of the four bands. Dragging any of the bands up or down changes the gain, or left and right changes the frequency. Pinching on the EQ ball will change the Q, giving you a narrower or wider EQ. Notice the color coding for easy identification, and a double tap on any EQ band resets its gain to zero. The high pass filter is also shown on the EQ display. It has an 18 dB per octave slope, and the frequency can be adjusted from 20 Hz to 700 Hz, allowing you to easily remove unneeded low frequencies. Below the display are a set of sliders giving individual control of each EQ parameter. This allows you to dial in the exact gain, frequency, or Q without changing the other band controls. If you want to get really exact, use the current parameter value display at the top to enter in the exact value you are after. Here you can also change the functionality of the first and fourth bands, which can be either shelving or fully parametric. And all four bands can be swept from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. There are a few more controls to point out on the EQ. First, there are individual buttons to turn the EQ on and off, and the high pass filter on and off. This is also where you will find the polarity invert button, for situations where you need to bring multiple mics into phase alignment. That's the high pass filter and EQ. Now let's look at the dynamics. This is just a single swipe away. Like the EQ, the gate and compressor each have a button allowing you to turn them on and off. The gate graph allows you to easily adjust threshold and range. Notice Grow and Glow makes it easy to see what control you are affecting. To the right, are the meters showing you input, output, and gain reduction. Next to that are the additional controls. Threshold and range are here again, along with three time-based controls, attack, hold, and release. The compressor graph also has a threshold control, but then adds the ratio and makeup gain controls. Notice how easy these are to adjust and how clear they are to view with their large labeling. After the meters, which again appear to the right, we have control sliders. Here we also have redundant controls for threshold, ratio, and makeup gain, plus attack and release. Finally, above these controls, you see a knee control for the compressor to select between hard or soft knee operation. All of the input processing I just showed you is available on each of the 16 input channels, plus the 17th iPad channel also has a four band EQ and compressor, making it easy to adjust the tone and dynamics of your intermission music or backing tracks. That's it for today's episode. Join me next time for a detailed look at the output processing. Until then, you can let us know what you think or hit us up with questions on Twitter, Facebook, or via email. We'll see you next time.